Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm going to do another hay bale harvesting scene. I've done something similar before in colored pencil, but this one is going to be in regular graphite pencils. So let's start. So I'm going to use these Faber Castell 9000 series uh, graphite pencils and I'm going to work on Fabriano sketching paper. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the composition. The reference is going to be in the description. I first divided the, the scene into two parts of uh, roughly the same size. Maybe the top part is a little bit smaller. That's going to be the sky. And I sketched out the shape of some clouds very lightly. And uh, I'm also going to have a large hay bale here in the foreground. So I took a little bit more time to define its shape um, and I also made some indications where where some of the other elements uh, will be in the scene but I don't really need to do an overly elaborate sketch I just need to uh, make some suggestions where some of the other hay bales will be anyway after that I started shading the sky and for the sketch and for the initial work on the sky, I'm using an HB graphite pencil. So I have five grades, or uh, rather six grades, in this set. And um, I'm probably going to use either all of them or most of them. But I decided to start very with a very light value here for the sky because... Um, HB is the lightest one that I have in this set and it's going to it's going to be the base value for the sky and it'll be just enough so that I can create a little bit of contrast between the clouds and the and that background the sky but at the top I added a little bit more value using a B and eventually a touch of 2B as well because I want to achieve a bit of a gradient where the sky is a little bit darker at the top a bit more value at the top and a bit lighter near those cl clouds and near the horizon now for the blending I'm using a Q-tip and this is a very good blending tool when you're working with graphite Brushes, tutilians, they work really well, but this one is also interesting because it blends very smoothly and very thoroughly. It's just that it requires a little bit more patience because you have to uh, work in uh, smaller circular motions. That's when it works best. But like I said, it can blend very smoothly, especially when you're blending these areas of uh, lighter value. So you can see that I worked around the shape, or rather above the shape of those clouds, and I decided to reserve the white spaces. I decided to reserve the areas of lighter value simply by not covering them with graphite. I will do some erasing, and I can erase graphite either with my kneaded erasers or Tombow Mono Zero eraser but if I can plan ahead and if I can reserve a bit of that uh, white space that's always a good thing and here with clouds I can do that because uh, what that's going to help me do it's uh, going to help me achieve more contrast in certain areas and uh, it's going to help me achieve a, a better edge in some places uh, with some lighter shapes where needed. I also used a Q-tip with a bit of graphite on it to add some indications of some areas of darker value in those clouds to make them look more three-dimensional. And then I picked up a Tombow Mono Zero Eraser and I worked on these edges erasing some of the smaller shapes making it look like in some places we have a bit more of a cleaner edge while in other places the the edge is a little bit more blurry and drawing some some of these smaller flyaway shapes here and there 
so that I can have these wispy clouds and uh, like I said in some areas I just want to have a cleaner edge and uh, edge to value between the cloud and the sky and I want to achieve something that appears to the, the eye of the viewer like a fuller more rounded shape anyway that's probably enough for the clouds it doesn't have to be too complex that's going to be the background anyway I'm going to be adding some other stuff in front of that so I'm going to add some woods in the distance this is going to be the first group, the first row of trees here on the left and um, while I sketched out the shape I also made some indications where some of the distant hay bales will be because I want to try to work around them, I don't want to cover them with um, softer pencils so that I can keep some of those shapes pretty clean. Anyway, I'm working with a 2B here and I don't want to go too dark uh, with values in this scene. The, the whole scene is going to be lighter anyway with maybe a, a little bit less contrast because it's a fairly sunlit scene with just a few clouds here and there and uh, we're going to have a little bit more contrast on some of the objects closer to the foreground. Here in the background I want to have these distant trees and um, with just a few suggestions of shapes. It uh, doesn't have to have too much texture or too much contrast. And here as you can see I'm blending with a totillion and as I'm doing that it's getting a little bit darker because I'm pushing the graphite into those lighter spaces but I'm also uh, trying to vary the amount of pressure in different areas and trying to vary the amount of material I push in uh, because uh, I want uh, that to look like a group of trees and in that group of trees obviously you're going to have some shadow areas in between the trees and or in between uh, the rows of trees so uh, you want to have some almost random uh, variation in value some texture to suggest that this larger shape on the horizon cons consists of many many smaller shapes and above that I'm going to draw some mountains in the distance but these are going to be even lighter in value they're just going to be dark enough so that they would stand out against the clouds because when you stack these elements um, when you're drawing a landscape it's very important to achieve, to achieve uh, a feeling of depth and to have um, some kind of contrast and range of value so that uh, you could explain where one shape ends and the other one begins. So with these hills or mountains in the distance it's important to have a, an edge between those clouds and the mountain and the mountains uh, themselves need to be lighter than the trees in front because they are further away and I want to imitate that feeling of distance to imitate that atmospheric effect where object in, objects in the distance become lighter and lighter and less and less defined. Now I'm moving on to these hay bales now and I'm going to draw the first one here to the to the left. We can't see all of it but then after that one I'm just going to draw a few more smaller ones in the distance. Now as for this a larger one here in the foreground that's obviously going to be a lot more detailed and it's going to be the most detailed object in the scene. So I'm going to have to pay a little more attention to that and put a little more work into uh, drawing those shapes. Um, and uh, while I'm drawing each and every one of those shapes, each and every one of those hay bales, I have to pay attention to uh, the relationship uh, between the object and the light source. Now the light source from what I can tell is coming uh, obviously from above but it's also coming a little bit more from the left and from behind so let's say that it's coming roughly from the top um, left corner maybe uh, that could probably uh, give you an idea where the light will be coming from I'm adding some more objects here on the horizon but these trees that I'm drawing now 
are more in front of, of that group of trees, of that row of trees that I already drew. And uh, to make them stand out, I'm using a bit more uh, darker value, and I used a 6B for these. And uh, I'm drawing the shapes in such a manner so that they resemble the, uh, the canopies of trees as seen from a distance. And I also try to create some random texture to, to make it look like foliage. There's another hay bale here, uh, which is a little bit closer to the foreground. So I'm putting in a bit more work to define some of its details. And as I've already mentioned, with the shading, you have to pay attention to the light source. And in my reference, I can tell the light is coming from above and a bit more from behind and the left, which we can tell by the distribution of shadows. Uh, so this uh, lower part of it, the hay bale, and to the right is uh, the darkest. And of course, the the part uh, where the hay bale rests on the ground is going to be the darkest bit, uh, where I'm probably going to use either a 6B or an 8B. As for the rest of this field, we have uh, very short cut grass with some uh, stalks of uh, whatever plants grew there and uh, to imitate the appearance of that I'm going to have to um, create these shapes that look like rows of cut grass and uh, in the distance they're going to appear like lines and as I get closer and closer and closer to the, uh, to the foreground uh, more and more of those shapes will be better defined and they will be a little bit larger and a bit taller. So uh, as we approach the foreground because of our because of the perspective, because of our, our point of view, everything that is closer to the foreground becomes larger and more defined. Here and there I'm going to throw in a few more of these hay bales and erase the top part so that it would stand out against the background. I always need to uh, Pay attention to that contrast between the light side and the shadow side and in this case the light side of the hay bale stands out against the background so it's always important to have that contrast and it's important to have that edge to value between an area of lighter value and an area of darker value so I have a lot of these hay bales on the horizon there well, not on the horizon, but rather at the end of that field, or the, or the edge of that field, just in front of those woods. And um, I also need to establish the contrast between the field and the top part of this he bale in the foreground here. Once I do that, that object in the foreground will really stand out against the background and it's going to help me make it look more three-dimensional it's going to help to <coughs> make my scene look more three-dimensional here at the bottom where we have the darkest shadow i even used a touch of an 8b the 8b uh, pencil is the darkest one that i have here and obviously i used it for what i think are the darkest bits uh, of, of this landscape here at the bottom. The rest of it, the rest of that shadow area is going to be done with a combination of a 6B and a 2B. And the grass under it and to the right because um, the hay bale is casting a bit of shadow there. The grass there is going to be darker so I used a pencil of um, um, darker value or a softer pencil for that and now I'm shading the side of that hay bale adding more value but also imitating that texture of uh, that uh, grass or stalks uh, wheat stalks whatever it was that's rolled into a bale so I'm trying to follow the shape of that bale to imitate those smaller shapes and that texture 
and uh, it's also interesting the way I'm shading this because uh, you'll notice that obviously the top part is lighter in there uh, as uh, the uh, round surface kind of uh, moves further away from the light source or winds away from the light source it becomes darker and darker I'm also using the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser to make some indications of maybe some uh, light uh, uh, light uh, um, flyaway stalks of uh, hay here and there or blades of hay, whatever you want to call them so that it looks a little bit more interesting uh, but let me get back to uh, what I was saying about shading that right side. So you can see that the middle portion is maybe a little bit darker um, than uh, the the part of the hay bale just under it. And then it gets really dark where the hay bale rests on the grass. That's because there's a little bit of reflected light on the bottom portion of that hay bale. So you need to take that into account because... And the object always interacts uh, with the environment and the lighting around it. So just uh, working on this front side, adding some more texture and some more of those smaller shapes. And adding maybe some uh, darker shapes here and there to give it a little more depth, to make it look a bit more three-dimensional. If I feel like I need to soften it a little bit. I can always move in with a brush and do a bit of blending, but if I want to bring back that texture and that illusion of detail, I can always go over it with a pencil again, maybe sometimes making more deliberate strokes, sometimes tr just dragging the pencil, allowing it to produce a little bit of random texture. And then as a finishing touch, I always go back in uh, with a Tombow Mono er Zero Eraser to, put, you know, to pull some of these lighter details to make the shape of the hay bale a bit more irregular, a bit more messy and a bit more natural looking. So the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser works pretty well for some, uh, for some of these smaller details but obviously it has its limitations because you're not always going to be able to uh, clean up or erase all of the shapes you want. It really depends on how you applied uh, your graphite pencils and um, how much pressure you used and, and some other stuff. So I'm moving uh, closer and closer to the foreground area drawing, drawing uh, this uh, grass in the foreground and making it um, longer and longer obviously and you can see how the lines which are stretching out to the foreground are also getting wider and wider uh, as they uh, get closer to our viewpoint. I'm adding some more details to some of those distant hay bales and also working around them to make sure that there is always enough contrast between, uh, between those uh, lighter shapes and the background. So for this one I decided to work with just regular graphite pencils because I have these Fib Castell 9000 uh, series uh, regular graphite pencils. These are very good quality graphite pencils but with graphite pencils it's usually not a big deal because a graphite pencil is a graphite pencil. Some of the higher quality ones are um, a bit more consistent when it comes to the range of value and a bit easier to sharpen. Uh, I also often use the Kohinoor graphite pencils and sometimes I, I also use the Faber-Castell matte graphite pencils which can produce maybe some areas of even darker value and uh, they're a bit less reflective, there is less graphite shine. But I thought for this scene uh, these uh, regular graphite pencils would do really well and um, I think it's turning out okay. You can see me pulling some lighter details on the ground using the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser which I normally use just for the finishing touches and just to add 
uh, some, of, some more of those lighter details to increase the range of value and to increase the contrast uh, where needed. And just putting down some finishing touches and removing the tape from the corners and uh, finishing uh, the rest of the drawing. So uh, the drawing is now done. I'm going to put my signature here in the lower right corner. And uh, I have lots of landscapes on my channel, whether they're in graphite or charcoal, so you should check them out if you like landscapes. Uh, for longer videos, full length narrated uh, videos and uh, more tips, you should check out my Patreon. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.